What's up, y'all? I got a family to feed, so let's get into this tea. We're about to get into the breakdown of uh, Megan Thee Stallion new lawsuit. That's all I got. Let's get it. I'm not a lawyer, but I read the recently filed lawsuit against Meg Thee Stallion. So let's go through what's being alleged in the lawsuit. The lawsuit was filed by a man named Emilio Garcia, and it's against Meg Thee Stallion as an individual, Meg Thee Stallion Entertainment Company, Rock Nation, Hot Girl Touring, and John and Jane Doe's 1 through 10, which really just means that at the time of filing this complaint, they didn't know those people's names. So they are going to amend the complaint later and then add in the names of those people. Okay, so when you get down to the factual allegations, there are two sections. The first is violations of FEHA, which is the Fair Employment and Housing Act. And then the second section has to do with wage and hour violations. So let's start off with the alleged FEHA violations. Or FEHA? I don't know. The lawsuit says that Emilio was on tour with Meg in June of 2022. And then one night after a night out, Meg, Emilio, and three other women were riding in an SUV when suddenly Meg and one of the women began engaging in an act. The suit mm. says that the plaintiff, Emilio, could not get out of the car as it was both moving and he was in the middle of nowhere in a foreign country. So mm, they was doing it. I like it. It says that Emilio was embarrassed, mortified, and offended throughout the whole ordeal. The following day, according to the suit, Meg asked Emilio if he was in the car the previous night, and after confirming that he was, the lawsuit says that Meg instructed him to, quote, don't ever... Damn, she be that drunk, she don't remember. ...ever discuss what you saw. It also says that Meg, quote, berated and directed her fat-shaming comments towards Emilio, calling him names such as fat, or telling him to spit your food out, and that, quote, you don't need to be eating. Emilio... He's not fat, why would she... Okay. Through the lawsuit goes on to say that Emilio told one of Meg's makeup artists that he was thinking about quitting due to Meg's quote possessiveness combined with the lack of appropriate pay for the amount of time that he was working. But apparently, Meg found out what he told the makeup artist, and so she quote drunkenly FaceTimed him. And on the call, Emilio expressed that he felt like he was being underpaid for the amount of hours he was working, and they were able to reach some sort of understanding. But despite that, Emilio remained on the schedule to work for Meg that following Friday. And then the night before that following Friday gig, the lawsuit says that Rock Nation informed him that his services were no longer needed. So those are the FEHA violations. And then the lawsuit moves into the wage and hour violations. And it alleges that from the beginning of the time Emilio was hired to work for Meg, he was classified as an independent contractor when he should have been classified as an employee. And before you check out, let me tell you why this matters. When you are classified as an employee, you get things like meal breaks or rest breaks and overtime pay. As an independent contractor, you don't get any of those things. And the reason this matters is because there have been some pretty significant rulings and bills that have been implemented in California in the last couple of years. In 2019, the governor signed the gig worker law, which basically says that if you hire anybody to work for you in California, they are by default an employee unless they can meet three specific qualifications. If they meet those qualifications, then they can be classified as an independent contractor. Follow me. The best example to use is if I'm you trying. hire a plumber. So if you hire a plumber, that plumber is going to tell you when they're available to come to your house, not the other way around. You also typically aren't going to look over them and tell them how to do their job because many times you don't know how to do their job. And typically after they leave your house, they go to somebody else's house, which means- I ain't gonna lie, like being a videographer and being an editor and things like that, probably one of the most hardest and- <sighs> That just is just not a good job. <laughs> you do see a lot of people's lives. I only know because I've done it myself. And you kind of do get treated like the bottom of the barrel when you're the one who's putting out the images. You're the one who is selling, selling that person's story. You know what I'm saying? You are not their sole source of income. So those are basically the three requirements in order to be classified as an independent contractor. And so Emilio is saying that he was basically classified the same way that a plumber would be classified, when in actuality, the work he performed was under Meg's control and direction. The work environment that he was in was under her control and direction. The lawsuit says he was always answering calls and running other tasks under Meg's direction. It also says that on multiple occasions, Meg explicitly directed Emilio not to engage with other clients, expressing her possessiveness over his services as her personal cameraman. Now, I've definitely done that before, honestly, because 
it's a conflict of interest. However, um, yeah, I've learned in that process, you, you can't stop, you can't stop other people from getting their money unless you paying them like full time. And I'm talking about good full time. Like it seemed like Casa Net videographer slash Chris, his name is Chris. He do everything for him. Seemed like he get paid real good because nobody else is using them. You know what I'm saying? So I, I can only imagine he getting great money. And I feel like if a person is getting fully paid and treated fairly, then they wouldn't want to go to nobody else. So Emilio says as a result of this misclassification, he was denied meal and rest breaks. And if he did take those breaks, he was not paid for them. He wasn't paid overtime or time and a half. And he was left without basic insurance coverage, depriving him of essential health care, all because of this misclassification. You can't stop people from getting food. I think that that is one of the, the worst things you could do. Five, five, five. Like a person can't perform correctly if they don't have nothing to eat. That's just not how that go. And that's why he's suing. The first cause of action is for hostile work environment harassment. And this really has to do with that SUV incident that happened in Spain. And Meg's alleged remarks afterward telling him not to say anything as well as the fat shaming. And then the second cause of action is for failure to prevent and remedy harassment in violation of FEHA. And this is specific to Rock Nation, Hot Girl Touring and Meg The Stallion Entertainment. Again, it's regarding the Spain incident, but it's against the companies because companies can be held liable for what their employees do. And in this instance, Emilio is saying that these companies should be held liable for what happened on tour when he was with Meg. And then causes of action three through nine are all about labor code violations. And it has to do with that alleged misclassification. It has to do with all the money that he feels like he is owed because he was called a contractor when he should have been an employee. Did y'all follow all of that? Yep. So Meg's team has come out and released a statement after this lawsuit was filed. And the statement says, this is an employment claim for money with no sexual harassment claim filed and with salacious accusations to attempt to embarrass her. We will deal with this in court. And just to be clear, there really is no sexual harassment allegations. All right, that's the lawsuit. Oh girl, she the only person that can break everything down for me. Y'all make sure y'all check her out. Um, her name is Mel Goolsby. Um, I wish she would just change it to I'm not a lawyer, but because people will be able to find her for real. However, don't get me wrong, when I put up when I put in I'm not a lawyer, but it does come up. But um girl, I know Megan a Stallion is tired, boy. She just can't get a break. Um, but if she was if she was doing a nasty in front of him, I don't know if he said in the moment, man, y'all stop doing that. I'm right, get me out the car. I don't know how that go. Um, but, you know, I, I just feel like it is hard to travel with people, even if if you work for them. Like, I feel like everybody need their own separate car. Maybe she did not know she was about to be doing the nasty, especially in front of somebody else. You know what I'm saying? That's just kind of crazy. Um, but the fact that she did do it, well, we are here. So I, I would have paid them, just let them know, like, I did, did. Was was I doing that in front of you last night? My fault. How much you need? You know what I'm saying? I don't want them problems. But um, I feel like the richer you get, the more money you try to hold on to. So there's that. Y'all let me know what y'all think about all of this down in the comment section below. Um, do y'all think that this, the guy is standing on anything? Do you think the lawsuit will go through? Because y'all know Megan Thee Stallion, she's a shooter in court. So let me know what y'all think. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Hey, yeah.